Profit. Lee's wishes all the area basketball teams good luck this season from Lee's Plumbing and Excavating. Prime Rozak and Steve Superk back here at West Mifflin High School, just about set to go. The Laurel Highlands Mustangs and the West Mifflin Titans, the Mustangs, and their away blues, white numbers, red trim. Their bench across the court to our right, the West Mifflin Titans, their home whites. Gold numbers with blue lettering saying Titans on the front of the jerseys and a little bit of blue trim around the gold numbers and their bench across the court to our left. This one of three Section 1 5A games going on tonight. Albert Gallatin at Connellsville. Of course, Laurel Islands here at West Mifflin. Thomas Jefferson at Ringgold. That game, Steve, will likely determine the fourth and final playoff spot in the conference. Yes, it will. And uh, a lot of big ones going on tonight, and this is a big one for the Mustangs and the Titans. And uh, should be a good one. And like I said, I'm really uh, interested to see how the bigger court, we haven't played on too many, the Mustangs haven't played on too many large college-sized courts like this, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. And it's... Uh, Kind of interesting, you look across the way, there's only six rows of bleachers over there, and it doesn't look crowded, but below us... About 60 rows? There, there's <laughs> the, no, the, I counted them. There's 25 rows, and it's about three-quarters full, so it's a nice-sized crowd, even though it doesn't look like it on your screen, but it'll probably get loud in here, here pretty soon. Jordan Lucas Johnson jumping for West Mifflin. Keandre DeShields jumping for the Laurel Highlands Mustangs. Penultimate section game of the year for both... West Mifflin and Laurel Highlands, and we'll get this one underway from West Mifflin High School tonight. And the opening tap goes back to Nico Johns. We'll hand off to Rodney Gallagher. Enters the forecourt. Little flip off high on the left there to Brandon Davis. Picked up defensively there by Todd Harrison for the West Mifflin Titans. Again, the Mustangs won 81 to 50 over West Mifflin earlier on this season, but expect things to be a little bit tighter here at West Mifflin tonight. Here's Keandre, thought about the three, now spins inside, hands off Chambers, comes free, far block, and lays it up and in. Great ball movement out of the Mustangs on the opening possession, right, Good Steve. job by the Shields. Great draw to, he, 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 he gathered a big crowd at him, and all of a sudden he slips it in there to Joey Chambers who gets the uh, opening bucket. And Chambers forcing a turnover there for Laurel Highlands, and try to fire a pass off to Gallagher. Got deflected there by Santella. Rod gets it back and drains a three from the near wing. Nothing but net there, Steve, and the Mustangs five unanswered here out of the gates. Well, so much for Coach Smith and his worry about a slow start. The Mustangs off to a 5-0 run, and the Titans have yet to get a shot off. In our second possession right now, and they'll reset back up top. Makai Scott being watched there by Gallagher. Now Scott backs off. A little miscommunication there with Santella. Now Scott, edge of the zone, sends it off to his left there to Jordan Lucas Johnson. He'll send it off to his right now to Santella. Santella, Scott, Stevenson, and Lucas Johnson all had 10 points against the Mustangs earlier on this season. Another Aaron pass intercepted. Brandon Davis coming back. Missed a layup out in front. Rebound pulled up by Harrison. He'll send it down the court. Three up top. Off the mark there from Akai Scott. Gallagher the rebound. He'll float it forward. Davis getting past the defender. Off to his left. Keandre oh, slammed it home. Call it. Call it. Charge. Charge. Sorry. Wow. It's a pretty dunk, though. Yeah, it was it's a not going to count. George has started a wave his foam finger down there in Delaware, but he's going to have to put it away. That one doesn't count, but I think he, he's still happy about that for Keandre. First foul of the game going against Davis. What would you think of that call? That's a tough call. <laughs> that was a tough call. I don't, don't know about that one. Scott sending it out far side. Stevenson floater off the mark underneath. Nico Johns the rebound. Rolls it out to Gallagher across here on the near side. Gallagher on the near wing now pulls up. Resets up top. Keandre line drive three on the way. Short off the front of the rim. And the Titans with a rebound there is pulled in by Makai Scott. One thing about that, it doesn't count on uh, whether there's a layup. A little finger roll up. score there on the drive. Giovanni Santella. Does, I was going to say it doesn't count in the stats for Keandre, but it sure does uh, look good on his highlight yes, reel. Yes, it does. 5-2 Laurel Highlands on top. Davis driving back got fouled. Couldn't get the and one, but he'll have two free throws upcoming, Steve. It's amazing. The Laurel Highlands team free throw shooting percentage now up to 74%. The Mustangs are perfect at the foul line on Friday against Albert Gallatin, and it's just amazing this deep into the season. Again, not wanting to put the eyes here on Davis tonight, but still, Steve, for a high school team to be shooting 74% is pretty remarkable. First of two here, of course, no good for Brandon Davis, who came in at 82%. Just can't leave it alone, can you? Just can't let him shoot. Tell the stats after he shoots. I've told you a million times. Davis, second of two free throws yeah. here. Good. 
After missing the first, he gets the second. That's his first point of the game, and it's a 6-2 lead for Laurel Highlands over West Mifflin. 5.30 left here in the opening quarter. Here's Makai Scott bringing it across. Picked up there by Davis. Double team comes over. Almost forced another turnover. Saved there by Harrison. Spins and sends it back. Santella along too far. Wing try to bank it in off the mark. Offensive rebound. Scott hands off to his left. Santella there. Lays it up and in. So Santella all four of the points for the Titans. It's a 6-4 Laurel Highlands lead at the 5-0-9 mark of the first. Here's Brandon Davis. John setting the screen. Now I'll send it in to Nico's direction. Ball gets tied up. We're going to jump ball, go to the arrow. It favors West Mifflin. Well, so far you can see that the Mustangs certainly look more comfortable and, uh, you know, look like the more uh, poised team. But, the, you know, the Titans have uh, somehow scrapped and clawed to stay within two. But they look like they're having a little bit of trouble holding on the ball and a little bit the shaky offensively. And Coach Stevenson going to his bench, bringing in Shy Newby, and Newby just had his pocket picked there by and Joey there Chambers. Go. Chambers just stole it away from him. And Chambers trying to go coast to coast, drives, can get a shot to finish. Johns looked for the follow, missed on the putback, and here's Wes Mifflin in transition with numbers. Harrison with a little finger roll out in front, first two of the game for Todd Harrison, and we're tied at six. Yep. 4.30 left here in the first. And this has just got to be a little concerning, I guess, for Coach Hogger, because you look like you're dominating and you're still tied. Here's Keandre was triple teamed and got found. Yeah, Tony yeah. Carter right on that call. Well, we've seen Tony Carter. We were teasing him walking in. We didn't, uh, Tony and I didn't get that invite to the officials banquet that you did. And we told him we missed a steak, T-bone steak dinner. And <laughs> he was actually emceeing the yeah. dinner on Sunday. I think he did the Uniontown girls game yesterday before the Uniontown boys game that we had for you here on WMBS against South Park. And here's Tony back at it, refereeing the Laurel Highlands West Mifflin game. First of two free throws. Good there for Keandre to Shields. And he uh, he said it wasn't steaks, though. So we It was not steaks. Yeah. You did not miss that. Still very good food. Going to have to thank Pat Line and the Fayette chapter for having me out on Sunday. Second of two free throws. No good there for Keandre. So Keandre hits one of two, and it's a 7-6 lead for the Mustangs. 4-13 left here in the first. And up top, working between the circles as the Titans made a couple of substitutions here. Makai Scott now with it, trying to spin off of Joe Chambers. Pulls it back on the near side to Harris and trying to go That's between be defenders. Got tripped up. It's probably going to go on Nico Johns. Tony Carter on the call. Good call by Tony. He wanted to make sure I was nice to him today, so, <laughs> I, so I'll give him credit there. Foul went on Nico Johns. Got a lot of listeners tonight, Brian. We'll say hi to Aaron Gizzy down in Morgantown watching. Appreciate Giz tuning in. Always took good care of us when he was working at the Uniontown Country Club back in the day. Newby, high arcing three, no good. Gallagher the rebound across to Davis, sending it down low to Joey Chambers. Missed on a bunny. Keandre tried to clean wow. it up, and that one didn't drop. Somebody now the Titans with a four-on-one coming back. Harrison on the drive and well, lost it off a of Gallagher now. A lot of those shots the Mustangs usually get yeah. to drop, Steve, are not dropping here early on. Still have 339 left in the first, a 7-6 lead for Laurel Highlands. They made a little reversal here. I mean, they, now they're going to give the ball to the Mustangs. Yeah, they might have put a little piano wire over top of that uh, hoop. They're just Balls are just not going in, but uh, still 7-6 lead. They look like they're playing pretty well. It's just the uh, Titans are hanging in there. Gallagher will switch with Davis back between the circles. Keandre near wing now. Joey Chambers back up top to Davis. Watch there by Newby as John sets the screen. Jumper from the elbow. No good. Santella pulls down the rebound there for West Mifflin. He'll send it across and a little floater in the lane off the mark from Akai Scott. Ball still loose. Santella finds it and lays it up and in. So Santella with six points here in the opening quarter. And look out. West Mifflin, an 8-7 lead over Laurel Highlands here with a 3 5 mark of the first. Yeah, Davis had his hands on it, but he got stolen away from him. Gallagher long 2-0, no good offensive rebound. Keandre missed on the putback. Another battle here, and it's going to be West Mifflin's basketball. I think Keandre yeah. might pick up the foul. He had his hand on it after he missed the layup or just the, you know, the putback, and uh, he had a little trouble. You're going to see Pratt come in the game now a little bit. A little bit more muscle and uh, size and athleticism down low, replacing Nico Johns. So that's first foul on Keandre. So again, the Mustangs uh, not in trouble, but they just got to get to, they got to get the ball to go in the hoop. Remember, Laurel Highlands trailed Albert Gallatin 16 to 13 after one quarter of play on Friday. And there's a charge on the Titans. That might be on number 11. That is. That's on Scott. 
That's his first, team third. Got some big, now more listeners, Brian, the Ferry Clan, my uh, my family, my wife's family, the Jim Ferry in Bethlehem, PA, watching. Will in, in Lambertville, Joey up in uh, Pittsburgh watching. Appreciate all... everyone tuning in. Here's Keandre, three, far corner, no good. Mustangs really have gone cold as of late. Scott bringing it back across here for the Titans. Sends it down low, and Harrison oh, got it to go. It. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Underneath the hoop, and he got a friendly boy that hung up on that rim and decided to fall as the Titans take a three-point lead. And this is where you normally see Gallagher when he senses his team needs a basket. You got to really, he can take over. Here's Davis on the inside, got blocked. I think a foul is going to get called there. Lucas Johnson had the block. Yeah, they're either going to call Johnson or let's see who they call that on. They do call it on Johnson, I believe. Mm. That's going to be his second already. Yeah. It's a big foul. He's their bruiser down yeah, low, 6'6", yeah, yeah. junior center, averages 9 points, 10 rebounds a game. He swatted his, hacked his arm there. We'll see if Coach Stevenson's going to stick with Lucas Johnson. Still in the game for now. First of two free throws, no good there for Brandon Davis. So Davis, who came in, the Mustangs' best free throw shooter at 82%. One of three to start this game early on. Well, again, a different uh, gym. It's a bigger gym, and the sight lines are different. It's, uh, you know, there's just more room behind the baskets. The ceiling's higher. It's just a little different look. And uh, the guys just got to get used to it. Davis hits the second, so it's 10-8 West Mifflin. And driving back, Newby lost it out of bounds. I think a foul's going to get called here on Gallagher. Yeah, they're going to call wow. Gallagher. They could have got Pratt. They get Gallagher. Both of them kind of sandwiched him. And they're going to are they going to give him sh a shooting foul too? Wow. And Newby's going to get two for West Mifflin. Newby did not score against Laurel Highlands back in January. Averages just two points a game. By the way, Uniontown up 14 to five over Elizabeth Ford after one quarter of play. First of two free throws. Good here for Shai Newby, increasing the West Mifflin lead back to three at 11 to eight. Now Newby for a second of two. Well, they list him at five nine. He looks bigger than that. This free throw no good from Newby and an offensive rebound from Santella here on the near side. Try to pull it back to Brandon Battles. Had a little juggle able to regain and they send it down low again. And the Titans have had good ball movement. Harrison will touch off to Santella, comes free and lays it up and in. So Santella with eight, and the Titans have a five-point lead over Laurel Highlands at 13 to eight. Here's Gallagher, baseline near side, hands off out in front. Keandre got fouled. I think his initial thought there, Steve, was to slam it home and never got to the basket. Well, he had a he had a run and start, and he wanted to ignite the uh, Mustang fans that are here, and there's a lot of them. And he got a little bit tied up there going up to the hoop, but at least he'll get to try to get two points out of it, and he makes the first free throw. Both of Keandre's points tonight coming from the foul line. Mustangs back to within four, 13 to nine. Who'd they call that foul on, Battles? Correct. No, new, uh, you're right, Battles is first. Keandre able to make the second we as well. Now. They're going to press a little bit to try to get the... Uh, Get the dogs running around a little they bit. They force a turnover, got swatted into Jaden Pratt's direction. Ford after a touch from Chambers down to Gallagher, missed on the drive. Keandre offensive rebound, scores on the putback. So Keandre well, he, now with five. Mustangs back to within one, down 13 to 12. He's so good at that, Brian, getting his rebounds around the basket. I like this press, and they're going to force another turnover as Pratt with the intercepts. Pratt going cross court near side Gallagher. Gallagher between defenders, point it back to Pratt, long two, far corner, no good. Rebound tipped around and controlled there by Newby. 45 seconds left here on the opening quarter. Gotta Newby, be in wow. no, they're going to call a blocking foul there on Chambers, and it really seemed like Joe set his position wow. and just got run Tony over. Tony Carter came up and said something. The official, you could see it. Well, he just said, wow, like, you know, can't believe you made that call. Because Chambers actually he was made waiting. the points. He was waiting. really set himself there. And if that's not a charge, I don't know what is. Yeah. Yeah, and the officials, yeah, he basically he's telling Coach Hogger that he slid a little bit, a little bit but I don't think so. And off the inbounds pass, Antella just throwing it off of Jaden Pratt. Just give himself another five seconds. Jaden laughing a little bit, but they uh, – this presto was a problem for the Titans. Uh, the Mustangs, uh, you know, they just got a score off of it. 
Here's Newby resetting here on the near wing. Watch by Chambers down at 37 seconds left in the opening quarter. Newby, tough shot, got fouled. Right. Titans getting a lot of calls here early on, they Steve. They are getting a lot of calls. Wow. 35 seconds left here in the opening quarter. 13-12, West Mifflin over Laurel Highlands. That's a tough call on, uh, on Joey Chambers. Second foul on Joey. Uh, how about I got we got another listener in Florida, Patrick Ferry and his and his son Jackson newbie, in the game. Newby makes the first of two free throws, a 16 foul on the Mustangs. And their cat Milo. Newby uh after making misses, the first, oh, misses wow. the second, but they give off the offensive rebound. Santella missed what appeared to be Steve, pretty much a bunny on the near block, got deflected out of bounds, off the Titans and out. And the Mustangs very fortunate there to get the basketball back down only two. Tell you what, this is uh, Titans hanging in there first quarter. This is uh, going to send some shock waves around WPIL, this first quarter score. Here's Davis up top in the corner to Chambers, back high on the right again to Gallagher. And if this lead holds up for West Mifflin after one, it'll be the second straight game where the Mustangs have trailed after the opening quarter. But Keandre is going to try to make go. sure that doesn't happen as he drains a three from the near side. That's eight points here in the opening quarter for Keandre. Mustangs now on top, 15 to 14. Titans get the last shot, looking for the bank with Scott. Couldn't get it to go. And Laurel Highlands, after a little bit of a struggle in that opening frame, they lead West Mifflin 15 to 14. We're back with the second quarter in 60 from the CR Product Group High School Sports Night. For attorney Melinda Della Rose, helping people with compassionate counseling, candid legal advice, strong advocacy, and professional commitment is what she does best. With an office at 99 East Main Street in downtown Uniontown, attorney Della Rose specializes in family law, municipal law, and general civil litigation, as well as personal injury, estate planning, probate, and more. For more information, call attorney Melinda Della Rose. 724-437-3200, 724-437-3200, or online at DelaRoseLaw.com. Going on now and see you at for Chevy. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Silverado for only $319 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is with GMS, a well-qualified individual, 24 months at 10,000 miles per year. With 4,500 cash rate equity with legal loyalty or lease conquest. Payment is for tax, settle fees, and percent. Security deposit waived. Sale ends February 28, 2022. Watch supplies last. Residency restrictions apply. Call dealer for all other details at 72499 8000. 15-14, the Mustangs leading the West Mifflin Titans. And Steve, you talk about folks listening from far away. Scott McLee checking in on our live stream from Los Angeles, California. Yeah. He's a ex-Red Raider. Says so he's rooting for the Mustangs, though, tonight. Atta boy. wonder if he's going to the Super Bowl. See if we go out there, if he can get you a ticket, Brian. Not a cheap ticket. <laughs> None of them are cheap tickets this year. Really never cheap tickets any year. There's Davis. Nice bounce pass inside. Gallagher wow. actually pulled it back to Pratt. Surprised he didn't shoot there. Well, he's going to maybe get a three out of it. Now he's going to drive gonna inside, and he drew the contact. Yeah, and he'll he's get two good free at that. Throws. He's good at that. And Tony Carter's going to give him that call. He's not going to call a charge there. That was definitely you couldn't call a charge. That's going to be on Santella. His second, I believe. Yes, it is. Interesting. Gallagher, though, gave up a layup. Threw it to Pratt, and then Pratt got covered, so he threw it back out. So good patience there by Jaden Pratt. Gallagher makes the first of two free throws. Mustang lead now at two. It's 16 to 14, 742. Left before halftime. Brian Morozak along with Steve Super. Tony Hanula behind the camera. Nick Barcheck back inside our WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Studios as Gallagher makes both free throws. 17-14, Laurel Highlands, three-point lead, 7.35 left before halftime. Mustangs back in the press here, Steve, as Newby sends it across on the near side. A little touch from Scott. Back in the corner, Santella. Now Scott again will back off, edge of the zone. Watch closely there by Gallagher. Back to Santella. Comes baseline far side. Try to pull it over there to Brandon Battles. Got deflected out of bounds. We'll stay with West Mifflin here in the Laurel Highlands zone. Got a request for you, Brian. I get our buddies uh, uh, Ness and Steve Johns, uh, Steve Ness or Steve John, they want you to kind of ease up on the, the eye jazz, and they said you're gonna, they're going to call you Captain Eye Jazzer if you keep it up. That's all right. I'm just passing along the facts. There's Harrison in traffic, a miss. Keandre the rebound. By the way, Scott McLee tells you, Steve, he went to the NFC Championship game, said Super Bowl's a long shot, but he's working on it. <laughs> there There's Gallagher, high arcing three, no good in traffic. Battle for the loose ball, and Davis keeps it alive. Back there in the corner, go. Keandre, and his three attempt came up short, got another opportunity off a of deflection, goes cross-court far side. Gallagher, Scott went in the air for a little leap, 
Missed there on the shot was Gallagher, and finally Pratt able to clean it up. Mustangs got about four looks on that possession. Well, and now go. the Titans are going to take out. a timeout. 19-14 Mustangs, 6.47 left before halftime. We're back in 60 here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Night. Dinner's great. It's one of your top three favorite meals. You just don't want to have to make it. Well, with Jimmy John's, you don't have to. Whether you live in a sandwich delivery zone or head into the store, you can always get a freaky fresh sandwich. Click to order at jimmyjohns.com. Freaky fast, freaky good. Order online at jimmyjohns.com or call 724-437-6800 for delivery or curbside pickup. Jimmy John's, next to Walnut Hill, shop and save. This is Dr. Fraser Stokes with the colon cancer screening update. If you have no close family member with colorectal cancer or precancerous polyps, you are at average risk and should begin screening at age 45. Colonoscopy is the most sensitive screening test and only needs done every 10 years. Stool fit testing and Cologuard are usually effective screening options with fit testing done yearly and Cologuard done every three years. Learn more at swgispecialist.com. Back here at West Mifflin High School, Titans with the basketball down. Five good ball movement again, and Santella, see, that's his spot on that far block. He's already in double figures with 10, and the Titans make it a one-possession game again, down 19-60. to 60. Santella playing very well tonight. Here's Keandre, jumper from the foul line, too strong there, long rebound, and who else? Santella on it there for West Mifflin. Back into the Mustang zone, coming near baseline, got pinned up there by Davis. Ball comes loose, goes out of bounds, and will stay with West Mifflin here in the Laurel Highland zone. Hey, the Mustangs are not playing bad basketball at all. They're just, uh, they're not making shots. And I, I, I like a lot of that, dudes, like the gym is just bigger and it, the sight lines are different. It's just tough to shoot. You know, you don't get a lot of warm-ups before the game. Jumper from the elbow, a little short there from Akai Scott. Gallagher running back, ran right into Scott. Might taking a shot to the jaw there and Scott picks That's up the foul. Collision there. That's Scott's second foul. Seventh team foul will be a one and one here for Gallagher. And you know, 13 total fouls already in this game. You know how you watch the NCAA tournament and they're playing those games and then they get to the you know the, the Elite Eight, the Final Four, and they play in those big stadiums and the guys sometimes have trouble shooting when they're playing those football stadiums and on obviously a smaller scale, but this is a little bit what like this place is like. It's so big. I agree. Gallagher makes the front end of a one and one and waits to get to the Peterson Center if you're lucky enough. That's correct. Of course, the Mustangs had success there, defeated Mars two years ago during Gallagher's freshman year on a WPIL championship. Gallagher makes both free throws, and they've really started their path to the Pete Well. 18 straight wins to start the season. They force a turnover here. Davis the steal off to Pratt. A little juggle to get him for the travel. He's had a little hesitation there on the carry. What's going on here? What's... Uh Tony Carter's chatting with uh, Battles. He's going to have him come. Oh, he's got blood. Blood, yep. yeah. And wear those white home jerseys that blood easy to spot. Yeah. Said that a couple of times we've done games this year. If the guys are wearing the darker blues, you probably wouldn't see that blood on the Mustang jerseys. Or sometimes. Don't, didn't we wear red one game this yeah, year? Yeah, they've had uh, alternate uniforms on, I think, twice this year. And you wonder if they'll bust them out maybe Monday for that Uniontown Laurel Highlands game. It's kind of like their special night jerseys. I think they had him for the Bell Vernon game. Here's Lucas Johnson pulling it back on the wing. Three on the way. In and out there on the shot attempt from Santella. But offensive rebound tracked down from Nolan Stevenson who's been quiet tonight. Back to Lucas Johnson in traffic. And he got wow. fouled. Mustangs were going for the block. They're off the glass. Keandre showing the hops. That's either going to be on Nico Johns or Pratt. That's going to be on Pratt. And just his first though. You know, Lucas Johnson to the line, and he averages nine points and ten rebounds a game. We don't have free throw percentages on the Titans, but he had ten against the Mustangs there back in January. He misses on the front end of a one-and-one one here, and since he got in a little bit of early foul trouble, Steve, he's yet to score in this game. Yeah, six foot six. You'd think he'd score a little more, but he's big around the basket. Second of two free throws rattling out there for Lucas Johnson. Mustangs bring it back across. Brandon Davis, step back three from the top of the key, there good. Go. Brandon Davis. They make a couple, get comfortable. It could be a, a little bit of a run for the Mustangs. I got an update now, 24 to 16. 513 left before halftime. Jumper from just inside the free throw line. Harrison good. Harrison with six points here in the first half. 
And the Mustangs off the oh. inbounds pass. That one tipped out of bounds. Uh, no, they're going to stay off of. Are they going to stay off of yeah, Santel? Yeah, I didn't see it. I was writing down the score. And now they're going to reverse it. Okay, yeah. Say Mustang yeah, basketball. He, yeah, he was, official just pointed the wrong way. Albert Gallants in a 21-10 lead over Connellsville end of the first. Colonials playing some pretty good basketball. Yes, they have. Connellsville a little down. Mustangs will see them on Friday. And Davis drew a little contact, drained the three. No foul was called. Well, it's That's almost back-to-back like -back threes for Davis. He tried to initiate the contact. There's a steal. That's Pratt on it. Almost lost the handle again. Gets it back. Takes a jumper. Well off the mark. Goes out of bounds. Will stay Mustang basketball. And, and you look up at the scoreboard, Steve, we talked about some of those runs, and right now the Mustangs have it back up nine at 27-18. Uniontown up 31-23 well, over Elizabeth Ford at halftime. Well, they call it the Zoomies. Davis adds to it. Yep. Three straight threes for Davis here in the second quarter, and he has 11 points. Timeout, time West out. Mifflin. 431 left before halftime. The Mustang lead at 12 at 30-18. We're back at 60 here on the CR Product Group High School Sports Night. When it's time to service your vehicle, don't procrastinate. Call Rose Motors at 724-583-1944. Rose Motors, specializing in computer diagnostics, engine and electrical problems, brake service, electronic tune-ups, air conditioning repair, exhaust work, state inspection, and more. Looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle? See Rose Motors, where financing is also available. Rose Motors, 42 River Avenue in Masontown. Serving the area for three generations. Open Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5, Saturday by appointment. Yes, your local State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home and auto. And guess what you'll get? That's right, good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman is your go-to agent in Uniontown for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try to combine home and auto today. State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman will help you mix and match things perfectly. Call 724-592-6308 for your surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, Primer. State Farm is there. Prime Rosek, Steve Superk back here at West Mifflin High School. 30-18, the Mustangs leading the West Mifflin Titans. A couple of folks, Steve, checking in, watching on Fayette TV tonight. Rich Lacey and Hopwood checking in. And Sandy Tracy works in our sales department as well, watching on Fayette TV. Uh, so hello to Rich and Sandy tonight. Sandy Tracy might be the biggest Pirate fan in Uniontown, right? She loves the Pirates. Hopefully she can watch a game yeah, this year, the way yeah. things are going. Well, she hasn't had much to root for the last couple of years. That's for sure. Mustangs back in the press after the West Mifflin timeout. Titans have used two timeouts here in the second quarter. will double team on Santella. Keeps it alive. Lucas Johnson. Reset back up top. Good ball moving back over to Stevenson. Far baseline. Couldn't get the shot to go in traffic. Davis picks up the loose ball there for the Mustangs. Touch from Pratt. Back to Keandre. Baseline Gallagher. Pulls it back out here on the near side. High feed. Pulls down by Davis up top. John sets the screen. Back to Gallagher on the near wing. Barks out of play. Fronted there by Santella. Stays with it now. They have the count on Gallagher there. He'll move off to his right. Take a long two and he'll rattle out. Ball loose underneath. Johns finds the offensive rebound and he'll put it back up yes, and in. Sir, After Nico. a little rattle, got it to drop. <laughs> His first two of the game, Nico Johns, 32-18. The press is given the Titans fits. There you go again. Right again, again another Pratt. steal. Three on two, hands off. Gallagher drives inside and finishes as that one falls out the front of the rim and in. Not much you can do at this juncture of the game if you're head coach Scott Stevenson of the West Mifflin Titans. Yeah, the Mustangs on a run. Timeouts already, and his timeouts haven't helped him. 34-18 Mustangs. Lucas Johnson down low. Harrison, was that a swat from yeah, DeAndre? DeAndre. Off to Davis, through a couple of defenders, driving inside on Lucas Johnson, who's going to wow. get credited there with a the block, no foul call. And now in transition, the Titans put it off the glass, and the shot attempt from Scott. Lucas Johnson missed the follow. Stevenson trying to track it down, ran into the Mustang bench, ruled out of bounds off of West Mifflin and out. The Laurel Highlands basketball with 3.02 left before halftime, 34-18 Mustangs. Wow, frantic, frantic action there for a second. Uh, looked like the Mustangs were going to score. Should have maybe been a foul call on the drive in there, but uh, no call. And then Titans had two good looks and couldn't put it in. Here's Gallagher, a little fadeaway far side, no good. John's going for the rebound, oh, nice. a little tap off to Pratt. Yeah, good tap. He lays it up and in. Good tap by Nico Johns. That's an unselfish play. Nico taps it over to Pratt, who finishes the job. Hard to believe, Steve, this lead up to 18. And maybe not that hard to believe if you've watched the Mustangs all season long. A little block there from Keandre. Uh, Tony Carter. They're going to call goaltending. Yeah. 
So who, who got that basket? Lucas Johnson's going to get credited with the basket. Close call. We'll give Tony Carter the benefit of the doubt. We're so high up, it's hard for us to tell if it was coming down, but you could have easily uh, called that one, I guess. And down low, a little scoop shot score there for Keandre. But Keandre now with 10. And the Titans trying to work out of their own zone, and the Mustangs trying to force oh, another turnover. And had a steal. <laughs> He had a steal, and Gallagher tipped it away from De uh, Keandre, who was looking to throw it down to Davis and Pratt, were already breaking. Would have been a layup, but uh, Gallagher tipped it away from his man, Keandre. There's a three up top, and that one sent uh, in by Todd Harrison. That was well needed by the Titans to keep him in this game if they can. They're getting outscored pretty badly in this second quarter. That one off the hands of Brandon Davis and out. We did lose our Facebook feed for a moment, Steve, but we got it back apparently now. Not sure what causes those little drops from time to time. But we are back online. We did lose our score hub, though, it looks like, so we'll try to get that back as well. And underneath. What do we got here? A little extracurriculars down there. Yeah, this is where Keandre and Pratt need to settle down. Nico, they just, you know, they can't afford to have anything happen where they get, uh, you know, kicked out of a game or, you know, then you get kicked out usually for the next game as well, don't you? You would if you got ejected here today. That foul goes on Newby. To 38-23, Laurel Highlands lead over West Mifflin. And it was 15 to 14 at the end of the quarter. So the Mustangs have put a put a hurting on the Titans in this second quarter. And Davis another made free throw. And he has three threes, ten points just in this second quarter. Makes the second as well. And Mustang leading out to 17. Lucas Johnson back through center. Bounces it off to his left there to Makai Scott. Now Lucas Johnson again on the near wing. Brandon Battles. Edge of the zone, Shy Newby. 17-point lead for Laurel Highlands. Newby three up top off the back iron. No good. Pratt going for the rebound. Newby got it back. Hands off down low and a little miss there for Makai Scott. And driving back. Wow. Ball deflected out of bounds. Coach Hogger wants a foul. I don't blame him. He got mauled. No call. They just to give it the ball out of bounds. But Coach Hogger has his arms out like, what is going on? And that ball just went right out of bounds. He threw it over there to the wing. And for some reason, Keandre didn't feel like he could catch it and just let it go right into the bench. It'll be Makai Scott working out of his own zone here for West Mifflin. Titans working left to right as we describe it. 104 left before halftime. And Johns oh, in the defense. face there of Santella. Santella gets it back, floats it out the front of the rim. No good. In traffic, Santella keeping it alive. He's played a nice first half for West Mifflin. Little floater out in front. Scott a miss, and then Davis goes crashing on the far side, and it will be right into, West Mifflin basketball. Running right into Coach Jenkins, dear Jenkins over there. He said, how do you do, coach? 48 seconds left before halftime. The top against Newby. Watch there by Gallagher. Newby double teamed up top. Down to Lucas Johnson. Trying to spin it on Keandre. Be a Another travel. foul call. He got bailed out with a foul. Looked like he... Lucas Johnson lost his footing there, and he just... Uh, Stumbled and he stumbled right into Keandre. They call that on Keandre, right? Second foul. Correct. First of two free throws from Lucas Johnson. Good. His first point of the game, one of three from the foul line. Well, he's got a two there before, I think. I had him for a two. 
Yeah, missed that along the way. Nonetheless, 40-24, Mustangs a 16-point lead. Joey Chambers now back in for Keandre after Keandre picked up that second foul. Second of two free throws. Good there for Lucas Johnson. 40 to 25. Final 30 seconds of the second quarter. Brandon Davis brings it back across. Davis high on the right. Watch there by Shy Newby. Davis driving in traffic. Couldn't get the shot to drop. Nico Johns, the offensive rebound, shuffled it out to Chambers. Back to Davis underneath. Reset to Gallagher now high on the right. Mustangs will hold for the last shot. With 10 seconds left here in the second quarter. Here's Gallagher, three up top. Good for Rodney Gallagher. Nice way to end the quarter, Steve. Gallagher with 12 in the first half. And the Mustangs will take a 43-25 lead to the locker room. And we're back to recap the first half scoring for you in a moment. Mustangs a 18-point lead over the West Mifflin Titans here on WMBS, the Triple Live High School Sports Network, Fayette TV, and Facebook Live. Keep your legal needs close to home. Attorney Vincent T. Berry specializes in criminal justice, wills and estates, family law, and personal injury. Attorney T. Berry is located at 84 East Main Street across the street from the Fayette County Courthouse in Uniontown. When you need to consult an attorney, make your first call to Attorney Vince T. Berry. It will be the only call you need to make. Call 724-430-0300. That's 724-430-0300. <laughs> Does your car sound like it's saying, trade me in, trade me in, every time you start it up? Well, go to Ford of Uniontown and trade it in. That's right, your Uniontown Ford dealer is ready to assist you with a new or pre-owned car, truck, or SUV purchase. Ford of Uniontown has all the deals, all the inventory, and they are ready to deal. It has never been a better time to buy a Ford. Service is their top priority. No matter where you purchase your Ford car or truck, Ford of Uniontown will be happy to service it for you. They offer Ford trained technicians, Ford certified parts and service, one year 12,000 mile parts warranties, and new state of the art service equipment. Call or stop in today to see the hometown service of Ford of Uniontown, Route 40 West, across from Applebee's. So listen to your car the next time you hear it say, Trade me in, trade me in. Ford of Uniontown, Route 40 at the top of the hill. UPMC Centers for Rehab Services on Wayland Smith Drive offers cutting-edge physical therapy. Jim Burns and his staff are residents of the community, treating sports injuries, neurological conditions, back pain, brains and strains, joint replacements, hand injuries, and other conditions. They treat you efficiently and safely by taking all necessary precautions while disinfecting the clinic regularly. All insurance accepted. Experienced therapists. Convenient location and hours. Part of the community. Call the office with a prescription from your doctor or schedule by direct access 724-437-7500. Looking for a dentist? Dr. Michael George and Dr. Ashley Parker of George Dental Associates, a Uniontown staple, has over 40 years experience treating patients of all ages. Their caring, professional team of dentists and their staff offer a full range of dental services, including restorative, preventative, pediatric, cosmetic, and so much more. Visit georgedentalassociates.com today. That's georgedentalassociates.com. And find out how they can enhance your smile through the art of dentistry. Wishing the Mustangs a successful season. Looking for a fast, friendly notary service? Sandy Howell Notary Services, LLC, 158 Drydob Road, Smithfield, PA, is here to help with transfers, plate renewals, new PA plates, and more. They serve Uniontown, Smithfield, Fairchance, and surrounding areas. Open weekday evenings starting at 5.30 p.m., Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Sandy Howell Notary Services, 158 Drydob Road, Smithfield, 724-564-8955. Big enough to serve you, small enough to know you by name. The North Union Township Recreation Center and Supervisors are a proud sponsor of the Laurel Highlands Mustangs basketball team. The North Union Rec Center and Supervisors wish the Mustangs good luck on their road to the playoffs. For information on the Rec Center's basketball and soccer league, please call 724-438-7350 or visit their website at northunionreccenter.com. You know the importance of planning for retirement, and you plan to enjoy a long and healthy life after you retire. But it's also important to plan for the possibility of needing care on a long-term basis. As life expectancies grow in the U.S., the potential need for long-term care grows as well. A Northwestern Long-Term Care Insurance Company policy can help pay for the care you may need. 
to learn more, call John R. Ritchie today, 724-550-4414. That's 724-550-4414 for John R. Ritchie. Primer Ozak and Steve Subert back here at West Mifflin High School, 43-25. Laurel Highlands leading the West Mifflin Titans. Steve has your halftime stats. They're brought to you by Peachin's Pharmacy, located inside the downtown Connellsville Peachin Market. Okay, for the Titans, Newby with two points. Santella leads the way with ten. Harrison with nine. And Lucas Johnson with four. They had 14 in the first, but just 11 in the second, 25 at the half. For the Mustangs, Keandre DeShields, 10 points. Rodney Gallagher with 12. Brandon Davis is leading the way with 13. Pratt with four off the bench. Chambers with two, and Nico Johns with two. They scored 15 in the first, but exploded for 28 in the second for a 43-25 halftime lead. We're back with the second half right after this. Mustangs up 18 over the West Mifflin Titans here on WMS the Turbine High School Sports Network, Facebook Live, and Fayette TV. Going on now with Steve Harper Chevy. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Silverado for only $319 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for a test drive or visit SteveHarperChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is through GMF, a well-qualified individual, 24 months at 10,000 miles per year. With 4,500 cash rate equity with legal loyalty or lease conquest. Payment is for tax, settle fees, and for payment. Security deposit waived. Sale ends February 28, 2022. Watch supplies last. Residency restrictions apply. Call dealer for all other details at 724-929-8000. Sam Davis was a gift from heaven. He knows the law and the court system unlike anyone else I've ever met or seen. Sam helped me get through the federal court system with the best possible outcome. Davis and Davis, personal injury and workers' comp. We at Davis and Davis are humbled by what our clients have to say about us. If you've been injured, call me, Jim Davis, for a free consultation. We have been helping injured people for over 40 years. Call 724-437-2799. Good times and good food. It's all at Potter's Bar and Grill on Morgantown Street in Uniontown, family owned and operated. Potter's has been a staple in the Uniontown community since 1950. So get out of the house and make your next night out at Potter's Bar and Grill on Morgantown Street in Uniontown. Call them up at 724-438-9835. That's 724-438-9835. Or visit Potter's on Facebook. We'll see you at Potter's. With branches in Markleysburg, Connellsville, Hopwood, Uniontown, and Periopolis, Somerset Trust Company is truly Fayette County's community bank. We invite you to stop by and experience the Somerset Trust Company difference. Local decision making, convenient locations, extended hours, award-winning online and mobile banking, and more. Somerset Trust Company, community banking worth talking about. Branches and ATMs throughout Fayette County. The Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 at Hopwood are proud supporters of local high school sports. For more information on the programs that the Catholic War Veterans provide, log on to the Catholic War Veterans website at www.cwv.org. You can also visit the Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 on Facebook or phone 724-437-3088. That's 724-437-3088. 3088 for the Catholic War Veterans Post 1669 in Hopwood. The WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital Orthopedic and Spine Institute is open and their experienced providers are ready to care for you. Orthopedic and Spine Care spans a wide range of problems from arthritis to joint trauma caused by injury or overuse. Hips, shoulders, knees, and backs are the most common areas where patients experience pain or impaired function. At WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital, they can treat orthopedic and spine problems with state-of-the-art care. Their board-certified orthopedic surgeons and specialists are well-experienced in the latest treatments for damaged and diseased joints. They offer everything from physical therapies to joint repairs and joint replacements. Whenever possible, the newest, minimally invasive techniques are used to ensure quicker recovery, less pain, and less damage to surrounding tissues. To learn more about the newly opened Orthopedic and Spine Institute at WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital, or to schedule an appointment, call 724-912-7533, or visit wvumedicine.org slash Uniontown. WVU Medicine Uniontown Hospital, the new us, here for you. Bad hair day? Bad day at the office? 
bad day behind the wheel? Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your Erie agent in Uniontown and Ross Traver Township is Sprouls Insurance Group. 724-437-9812 or go to SprowlsInsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. 43-25, the Laurel Highlands Mustangs leading the West Mifflin Titans. Ryan Morozak along with Steve Super, Tony Nola behind the camera on our Facebook Live and Fayette TV video feed. And if you're watching on Facebook, you can also watch on Atlantic Broadband Channel 77 tonight. A couple of other scores to pass along. At last check, Uniontown up 31-23 over Elizabeth Ford at halftime. And the Albert Gallatin Colonials, Steve, running away from Connellsville. 44-15, Albert Gallatin. Leading Connellsville at halftime. I have to thank our good buddy Rick Frank, Steve, for that text message. Rick checking uh, out Rick the Falcons Frank. and the Colonials tonight. That's a name from the past, isn't it? Ricky's getting around. Where's that game? Is that at Connellsville or is it AG? That game is at Connellsville tonight. Wow. He's uh, made a trip. Maybe he's planning on going to one of those local spots down there in Collinsville get some pizza or something. After Not sure. Not <laughs> sure what his plans are after the game. Again, our next broadcast comes your way. On Friday, Laurel Highlands hosting Connellsville on the air at 7 o'clock with our Sprouse Insurance Group pregame show opening tip set for 7.30. It's also fan appreciation night for the Mustangs on Friday. And then coming up on Saturday, the Uniontown Red Raiders taking on Albert Gallatin. That game on the air with our Sprouse Insurance Group pregame show at 11.30 a.m. Opening tip-off set for 12 noon. And then our regular season wraps up on Monday with Laurel Highlands hosting Uniontown. Again, a 7 o'clock Sprouse Insurance Group pregame show 7.30 tip for Uniontown and Laurel Highlands. We're set for the second half here. Laurel Highlands leading by 18 and 43 to 25. Leading scorer for the Mustangs in that first half. Brandon Davis with 13, but it's been balanced. You have Davis with 13, Gallagher 12, Keandre with 10, Giovanni Santello with 10 on the West Mifflin Titans side. And West Mifflin got off to a good start. Mustangs led by just one, 15 to 14 after one quarter of play. But Laurel Highlands outscored the Titans 28 to 11 in the second quarter. West Mifflin working right to left, as we describe it for you folks on the radio side here in the third quarter. Scott down to Lucas Johnson, will turn and shoot. Keandre might have got a piece of the first shot attempt. Lucas Johnson missed on the putback, deflected out of bounds. We'll stay with West Mifflin here in the Laurel Highlands zone. Wow, six foot six. You think he could get it a little stronger to the hoop, but he just goes a little soft and. The Mustangs able to tip it away. Scott resets back up time to Nolan Stevenson, and Nolan held without a point in that opening quarter. Long three from Harrison off the mark. In traffic, Joey Chambers the rebound for the Mustangs. Four to Keandre. Keandre between defenders with the finish. A little dribble drive action there for Keandre to Shields. He has 12. Mustangs now on top by 20 at 45 to 25. Split the defenders. He went right through him. There's going to be a touch foul on Davis and Coach Hogger. And Coach Smith did not like that call. Seen a couple of those tonight. Yeah. Titans get... keep possession. Still trying to get that stake from Tony Carter after the game, so I won't uh, <laughs> You're trying upset. to be nice. Yeah. A little switch there back to Stevenson from Scott. A little poke from Davis uh -huh. to Gallagher. Back to Brandon Davis. Off the glass and the dunk from Keandre. Pretty again, Steve. Yeah, that's pretty good there. <laughs> Coach Auger does, just smiles and lets them do their thing, especially when you're up by 20. It's uh, You can have a little fun. And well, George got his foam finger working down there in Delaware after that one, doesn't he? Stevenson had it poked out of bounds right on that. I'm sure he's excited about that. You just don't see that a lot in high school basketball, Correct. especially from a kid that's six foot Three. I mean, he's not, you know, 6'8". I mean, he's only 6'3". Scott edges the zone, pulls it back. Santella watched there by Chambers. Comes in left of the lane, floats it up and in. Santella continues to play well for the West Mifflin Titans. He has 12. They're back to within 20 at 47-27. 6.28 left here in the third. Went through John. Saved by Keandre. Keandre now left of the lane. Jumper yeah, good. Keandre to Shields. They're starting to feel it now. Yeah, Keandre he's... six in the third, 16 for the game. They're starting to get a little rhythm. And Elizabeth was... Forward's taking a lead over Uniontown. Warriors up 44-43 over Uniontown after three. And Uniontown led that game 31-23 at halftime. 
Well, Tony's buddy, the coach at uh, Elizabeth Forward, will be happy. If Matt they, Loftus. Yeah, if they hold that lead. We're going to see him after the game tonight, I believe. Well, bounce pass down low and scooping it up and in, Makai Scott. His first two of the game. 49-29, 20-point lead for the Mustangs as we go under six minutes. Left here in the third, Davis right in the lane. A little contact and a foul called. Either going to go on Lucas Johnson or Newby. I think he's going to call it on Newby. They're both in the vicinity. Yep. Goes on Newby. His second. First team foul of the second half. We're on the opposite side of the scorer's table here at West Mifflin High School. You can touch some of the rafters from where we're at. Brandon Davis connecting on the first of two free throws. He has 14 points in this game. Lee now 21 at 50 to 29. Now Davis for a second. On the way and good. So 15 for Brandon Davis. Lead at 51 to 29 for the Mustangs. So we go under six minutes left here in the third. Coming back, Santella trying to pull it up to Newby. Got intercepted by Davis. And he will dunk it home. But it'll bounce off to himself for the dunk. <laughs> wow. They're getting creative. Harrison right in the lane, missing there. Mustangs breaking back again. Davis now 17 points in this game for the Mustangs. Keandre yeah, battling there with Harrison. The foul will get called. Things getting a little chippy out there, Steve, between these two teams. And Keandre, a little smack talk there with Lucas Johnson. Yeah. Foul did go on Keandre, his third. Be West Mifflin basketball with 5.27 left here in the third quarter. Lead at 24. Scott brings it back across over to Lucas Johnson on the far wing. The top again, Harrison holding. It's watched there by Keandre off to his right again to Newby. Now far side, Scott Long, three good, Makai Scott. So he has five third quarter points. 53-32 Mustangs. Give Coach Stevenson credit. He's edging on his team. He's encouraging them. Just a little bit overmatched at this point. Davis off to Chambers. Bounce pass, Nico Johns. Jumper left of the lane, no good. Rebound pulled down there by Shai Newby. Floated up off a little deflection. Santella, nice save and a pass over to Lucas Johnson. Baseline now to Scott. They'll pull it back outside the arc. Titans have shown good ball movement tonight as well, Steve. They're well coached. Here's Scott again, staying with it for the Titans. You can just see the Mustangs are challenging out there on the on the arc they're smelling it smelling Float. like a shark smelling blood in the water floater from newbie went off the glass and out so the mustangs get it back leading by 21 at 53 to 32. gotta be careful they're pressing now i don't think the mustangs are too worried about that they're going to back off anyways at half court i think the mustangs would mind that steve get a little sweat going the other way Chambers down to Gallagher. Jumper left of the lane, spinning out there for Rod. Santella the rebound for West Mifflin. Got around Davis, back in the Mustang zone. Fired it back out on the wing there to Newby. And they carry. Travel, yep. Carry call there on Newby. One of those borderline plays there, Steve. Watched it a little bit on the replay. Didn't notice it that much. Now, usually if he's not going anywhere and making it, you know, a play to get past the defender, they'll let you get away with that. Chambers off to Davis. Three on the way. Off the mark there, Brandon. Makai Scott, the rebound for West Mifflin. Scott back across Santella. He'll spot up for the three. It rattles out. Long rebound. Track down. It's going to be showtime again. Davis will just drive and score. And Davis with six here in the third. 19 for the game. 55-32, 23-point lead, 3.30 left here in the third quarter. Another double team coming on the ball. Gallagher finds the loose ball, put it off the glass to Keandre. One-handed slam. Wow. How did he get that one in? That might have been the best dunk of the year. And if you look at the difficulty level, and that's going to be a blocking uh, foul on Johns Nico down Johns low. never touched him. He, he never touched him. Injury down there too, Steve. UPMC Centers, Free App Services, injury timeout. Santella down, take a quick timeout. Mustangs up 57-32. Back in 30 here on the CR Product Group High School Sports Night. 
Looking for the highest quality products at the lowest prices? Shop and save on Walnut Hill in Uniontown is the widest selection of brands and the freshest offerings around. They specialize in your family's grocery needs. Save big and sign up for the Shop and Save Perks card to get money-saving benefits and discounts on gas. Shop and save. Walnut Hill Road, Uniontown, open 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Working hard to offer you the best at Shop and Save because it's the just right thing to do. Mustangs up 57-32. Santella being helped up. And he's played a great game tonight, Steve. You hate to see that. Yeah, he's not putting any weight on that left uh, knee. That's not uh, what you want to see if you're a Titan fan or anybody's fan. Really, you don't want to see a kid get hurt like that. You make the trainer work, too, ready for retirement. Yeah. One last job to do. Yeah, we hope Santella's all right. Again, had 12 points already in this game for West Mifflin. Mustangs up 57-32. 3-12 left here in the third. And back to that last dunk from Keandre. Steve, that might have been the best dunk the Mustangs have had all year. If you look at the degree of oh, difficulty, 9.9. The judge from Russia gave him a 9 instead of a 10 there. <laughs> well, that was pretty – you know, the pass from Gallagher off the board was just a little too bit too high and – Towards, back towards the foul line, and he just reached up and grabbed it with his left hand and just really had no other choice but to try to throw it down, and he made it. Johns almost forced the steal. Ball still loose. Stevenson the save for West Mifflin. He'll send it down low and underneath, getting the quick two. Brandon Battles, his first two of the game, 57-34, 23-point lead for the Mustangs. 250 left here in the third. There's Brandon Davis on the far wing, long two, no good there for Brandon in traffic. Rebound pulled down by Harrison, outlet pass forward. Stevenson was driving, got blocked, they were able to keep it alive. Missed there from Battles, Mustangs with a loose ball out of the pack. Gallagher driving right down the lane, unable to finish. Titans had the rebound, was poked away from Harrison and somehow deflected off to Stevenson as West Mifflin stays with it. Stevenson appeared to initiate the contact, no foul called and Stevenson Got the shot to drop for his first two points of the game. Yeah. It's 57-36. A little bit of help for Skelter all of a sudden, sudden but the uh, Mustangs still maintaining it. What's that, a 21-point lead? Yes, 57-36, 202 left here in the third. Gallagher with John setting the screen, taking the jumper. It's off the mark, trying to follow it up, looking for the tip. Ball still loose. We'll go out of bounds and go over to West Mifflin. Roll down for Laura Highlands and out. Rusty Richard, Steve, wants us to do a little homework and get a little highlight reel together on Twitter with those insane dunks. That's How a, about you work on that overnight for that's us, That's a project for Nick Barczyk. <laughs> you know, <he's> just... <laughs> Up top, Scott missing it there on the three. Mm -hmm. Rebound to flex off on the far side. Stevenson had it. I think they're going to call a foul here on Chambers. They will. That's his third. I got enough trouble turning my phone on down here. Are you one of the technology challenge? If yeah. you're watching the game at home, you turn it on Fayette TV instead of on Facebook? Yeah. <laughs> Driving inside. Tough shot there in traffic. Scott missing. Lucas Johnson keeping it alive. Pulling back to Harrison. Out of the near corner. Harrison taking the long two. It's no good. Deflecting off to Stevenson. He'll float it back up. Another miss. And Pratt in traffic. Picks up the rebound there for Laurel Highlands. Mustangs back on it. Leading by 21. As Davis brings it across. Davis coming baseline far side, got fouled and still got the shot to go. Brandon Davis putting on a show here in the third quarter. He has 21 for the game. A.J. Sumter will check in for the first time, replacing Joey Chambers. Foul one on Brandon Battles. His second, team second of the second half. They haven't gone real deep in the bench tonight. That's the first player other than Pratt to get off the bench. Sumter gives the Mustangs some pretty good minutes when needed. Davis's free throw good. So Davis, nine here in the third, 22 for the game. Lead at 24, 60 to 36, 111 left here in the third quarter. Makai Scott now edge of the zone. Off to Lucas Johnson, high on the right. Another quick foul. Call a lot of these touch fouls tonight, Steve. That went on Sumter, his first team fifth. 
Nine shooting. And Harrison will trigger it in. Over to Lucas Johnson in traffic. That's another one on the floor. Wow. Now a technical foul called. Technical foul on the coach. But if the foul went on Laurel Highlands, why did Stevenson get teed up? Well, apparently he said one of those magic words you don't, the officials don't like hearing. But why would he have been upset, though? I mean, they've got a lot of calls going their way. So you're going to have the initial. Actually, that foul went on, on West Mifflin. So it did go on West Mifflin then. No, they uh, called it on Sumter. Yeah, they called it. And Stevenson got the technicals. So that is odd. Kind of an odd situation for Stevenson to get teed up. And Gallagher misses the first of two technical free throws. Rod, 12 points at halftime. He's yet to score here in the third quarter. Now Gallagher for a second. This one is good. 13 tonight for Rodney Gallagher. It's a 61-36 lead for the Mustangs with a minute left here in the third quarter. That was the sixth team foul on the Mustangs, but Laurel Highlands will still get possession of the basketball because the technical on Stevenson will trump the foul on Sumter. And Pratt will send it into Brandon Davis. John sets the screen, goes off to Gallagher. And Gallagher from the far side, jumper from the far elbow, actually tried a little pass there off to Sumter. It was cut towards the basket. Stevenson finds the loose ball. Stevenson over to Lucas Johnson. His jumper good. Jordan Lucas Johnson, six tonight. 61-38 Mustangs, 23-point lead with 35 seconds left here in the third. Brandon Davis, a little contact up top with Makai Scott. And Scott's going to pick up the foul. It's going to be at least his third. It is his third. That's team foul number four on West Mifflin to get on the floor so he won't shoot. Jaden Pratt will lob it in for Brandon Davis. Trying to get around Scott. Davis stays with it right down the lane. Davis got fouled. Shot one drop, but Davis will two free throws upcoming. 61-38 Mustangs. 26 seconds left here in the third. We'll squeeze in a quick 30 here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Night. Suite, a party boutique located at 21 North Basin Avenue is the sweetest little boutique in the area. Simply Sweet is filled with Valentine's Day party decor, paper goods, and gifts for your favorite Valentine, Galentine, or sweet little time. Surprise someone special this Valentine's Day or any time with one balloon or a bunch from Simply Sweet's Balloon Bar. Simply call 724-317-4929. Simply Sweet Boutique also specializes in balloon decor, event rentals, and event planning. Davis hit one of two free throws. It's a 62-38 lead for the Mustangs. Stevenson edge of the zone, double teamed, and we got another foul called here. Oh, you might get a jump ball there, Steve. With 15 seconds left in the third quarter. Yeah, it's another run on Sumter. He comes in, he gets two tough calls on him. And uh, seventh foul, so they'll shoot. Yeah, one and one for Stevenson. And his two points tonight came in averaging they just eight won. points and 5.4 steals a game. Had 10 against the Mustangs back in January. There's a third foul on Sumter, as Steve said, as Stevenson makes the first of two free throws. AJ probably has only played Steve about three minutes and has three fouls so far tonight. Now Nico Johns will check out. Get his money's worth. Yes, he is. Stevenson for a second of two. High arcing shot good for Nolan Stevenson. 62-40, 22-point lead for the Mustangs. Ten seconds left here in the third. Davis touch off to Gallagher again. Watched here on the near side. Shovels it down to Davis. Davis right of the lane will turn and shoots. Came up short there. Stevenson the rebound on the end of the quarter. For the Mustangs leading at 62-40. We're back with the fourth quarter in 60 seconds. Here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Night. Harper Chevy. Our customers can drive away in a new 2022 Chevy Silverado for only $319 a month. Security deposit waived. Stop in for test 
drive or visit SeaHarborChevy.com. Chevrolet, find new roads. Lease is GMF for well-qualified individuals, 24 months at 10,000 miles per year. This 4,500 cash rate equity with lease loyalty or lease conquest. Payment is for tax, federal fees, and for damage. Security deposit waived. Sale ends February 28, 2022. Watch supplies last. Residency restrictions apply. Call dealer for all other details at 724-99-8000. For attorney Melinda Della Rose, helping people with compassionate counseling, candid legal advice, strong advocacy, and professional commitment is what she does best. With an office at 99 East Main Street in downtown Uniontown, Attorney Della Rose specializes in family law, municipal law, and general civil litigation, as well as personal injury, estate planning, probate, and more. For more information, call Attorney Melinda Della Rose, 724-437-3200, 724-437-3200, or online at DellaRoseLaw.com. Back here at West Mifflin High School, the Mustangs a 62-40 lead over the West Mifflin Titans. Laurel Highlands outscoring West Mifflin 19-15 in that third quarter. Mustangs led by only a point after one at 15-14. Outscored West Mifflin 28-11 in that second quarter to lead 43-25 at halftime. Now up 62-40, 22-point lead with eight minutes left in regulation time. Haven't hit that magic 30 spot yet, Steve. See if we get it here in the fourth quarter. Here's Davis high on the right. Watch there by Scott off a deflection. Keandre finds it, drives, and scores. Like it was going to rattle out, then rattled back in for Keandre to shield, who has 18 in this game. It's 20. The 20? Yeah. I missed a two somewhere along the way, though. And another steal. There's Davis breaking back. They'll put it off the glass, and Pratt will slam it home. <laughs> They've had their fair share of highlight reel dunks in this game, Steve. Yes, they have. And that one floated in by Todd Harrison, who has 11. 66-42, 7-18 left here in the fourth. Gallagher will turn and shoot, put it off the glass. No good. Rebound was poked, and they're going to get, I think, Keandre here for a foul. It'll be a one and one back on the other side. That's four for Keandre in this game. I don't think uh, Coach uh, Hoggers real concern at this point. Steve, do you recall any Mustangs fouling out of any games this year? Uh, no. I don't. Tony's shaking his head. When was the last time you could say a team's played 18 games and hasn't had one player oh, foul out in a single game? Front end oh. of a one and one. If it's going to happen, it'll happen here in the next five minutes because you just said that. Keep Tony's going. rethinking and saying Davis might have fouled out. I think he One did. One game. Yeah. Harrison makes both free throws. 66-44, 22-point yeah, lead. It's not that big of a deal when you're up by 20, son. No. Yeah, Just you, fodder for late in the broadcast. 7.05 left here in the fourth. Keandre in traffic, got fouled. He'll have two free throws upcoming. And the Mustangs back in action. On Friday, taking on Connellsville, or yes, taking on Connellsville on the air at 7 with our Sprouts mm. Insurance Group pregame show opening tip set for 7.30. West Mifflin, they'll wrap up conference play at Thomas Jefferson on Friday as well. Again, Thomas Jefferson playing Ringgold tonight. Big game for that fourth and final playoff spot in the conference. First of two free throws, good there for Keandre. And he now has 21. Kai Scott made his way back to the bench. They wrapped his leg, and it looks like he wants to come back in the game. Well, that was Santella that got injured, Steve, not was Scott. That oh, was that Santella? Yeah, Santella number four was okay. the Titan that got injured. 68-44, oh. long three up top. Not the back iron, no good there. Shy Newby. Davis the rebound. Set it off to Gallagher on the far side. Back to Brandon Davis, high on the left. Davis will bump there from Stevenson, staying with it. Take count. a jumper from the far elbow and get fouled, and Davis will have two free throws upcoming. 68-44, Mustang 634 Red up Raiders, here in the fourth. Brian, Red Raiders won 54-48. Billy Dice just sent us a text. We're going to take a quick 30-second timeout here on the ECR Product Group High School Sports Night. Just as your local State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home and auto. And guess what you'll get? That's right, good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman is your go-to agent in Uniontown for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try to combine home and auto today. State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman will help you mix and match things perfectly. Call 724-592-6308 for your surprisingly great rate. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Wow. 
Davis made both free throws. It's a 70 to 44 lead for the Mustangs over the Titans. And as Steve said, Uniontown a 54-48 win over Elizabeth Forward tonight. And we still have 621 left in regulation here. And Mustangs up 70 to 44. Sumter may foul out, Brian. He's only played about five minutes of the game. He just picked up his fourth. 71-32 late Albert Gallatin over Connellsville. And wow. they do confirm, Steve, on our Facebook live feed that Davis did foul out against Norwin. So yeah. everyone keep us on our toes. We like that. Scott made the first of two free throws. Well, you know, in our defense, we've been doing a lot of games. It's hard to remember every yes. one of them. Not only Laurel Highlands. I yeah. think we've done about 13 Uniontown games this year as well. So yeah. we've been busy. 70 to 46, 24 point lead for the Mustang. 6.15 left here in the fourth. Gallagher high on the left. Sumter setting the screen. Gallagher dancing around. will take the three up top. Put it off the front of the rim. Oh. No good. Lucas Johnson had the rebound. Lost it out of bounds. Sumter almost was fouled out right yes. there. He could have <laughs> easily got the foul call as he tried to bat that ball over Lucas Johnson. And hit him in the back, and I'm surprised they didn't call that. 6.02 left. Mustangs up 24. Titans get the basketball back because they rolled that off of Laurel Highlands and out. Here's Newby high on the right. Watch there by Keandre as Lucas Johnson sets the screen. He'll switch it back there with Scott. He'll take a long three up top by Keandre and his face couldn't get it to go. Gallagher the rebound. Outlet pass Keandre. Hauls it in. A little stop, a pop, and a make for Keandre to Shields. Keandre 6 here in the fourth. 24 for the game. 72-46. Lead at 26 with 5.33 left here in the fourth. Newby back on the other side. Watch there by Keandre. Newby long two, an air ball. Goes right to Pratt. Forward to Davis. Could be showtime again. And Brandon Davis would just lay that one up. And I don't think he got good enough run there, Steve, to take the dunk. And we have a timeout with 5.18 left in the fourth. 74-46. We're back at 60 on the CR Product Group High School Sports Night. Did you know that you have a choice for your physical therapy provider? NovaCare Rehabilitation offers same-day appointments, and oftentimes you don't need a prescription from your doctor to see us. We will make sure that you are treated as an individual and will work directly one-on-one -on -one with you to help achieve your goals. You have tried the rest. Now try the best. NovaCare, Delaware Avenue in Uniontown. Phone 724-437-0556 to schedule your appointment today. Let's face it, sometimes local is better. Locally grown, locally sourced, shop local, eat local. What about local expertise? At Allstate, Russ Playho is just that, a local. So contact Union Town Allstate agent Russ Playho today at 724-439-9700. Russ can help you with the protection that's right for you and the things you love most. Allstate, are you in good hands? Subject to terms, conditions, and availability, savings vary. Life insurance offered through Allstate Life Insurance Company and Allstate Assurance Company, Northbrook, Illinois, and American Heritage Life Insurance Company, Jacksonville, Florida. Back here at West Mifflin High School. And Steve, it's amazing how similar a lot of these games have been for Long wow. Islands this year. Slow start, and just like that, you look at the scoreboard, they lead by 28 here in the fourth quarter at 74-46. to 46. Tony and I were talking about that at halftime. It was like you could hit the repeat button on about 80% of these games. Slow start. All of a sudden, second quarter, they pull away. Third quarter, pull away a little more. And fourth quarter, they're pushing that 30-point win. They can get 30 here after a West Mifflin miss. Keandre in traffic got fouled. And he'll have two free throws here with 4.52 left in the fourth. 74-46 Mustangs. And they will rule this in the act. We'll take a quick 30-second timeout here on the CR Product Group High School Sports Night. I'm attorney Rob Harper, and I'm happy to be joining Bill Martin and Trip Radcliffe at Radcliffe Law in Uniontown. I grew up in Uniontown and chose to make Fayette County my home. I also represent the county as an assistant district attorney, and I know my way around a courtroom. If you are hurt in an accident, buying or selling a home, need assistance with an estate or will preparation, call me at Radcliffe Law, 724-439-3939. The initial consultation is free. Radcliffe yep. Law, making the law personal. Keandre made the first free throw, missed the second, and Nico Johns battling for the offensive rebound, able to keep it alive, and he'll pull it back to Keandre. So right now the lead at 29 as Chambers spots up for the three and hits it. First points for Chambers since the opening quarter come from outside the arc and pull the lead up to 32 at 78 to 46. Yep. And he's a kid, Steve, really battles hard all game long. That was a good pass and a feed down to Harrison and a great role player. 
for the Mustangs. 78-48 timeout on the court. 423 left here on the fourth or back at 30 on the CR Prana Group High School Sports Night. Looking for a dentist? Dr. Michael George and Dr. Ashley Parker of George Dental Associates, a Uniontown staple, has over 40 years' experience treating patients of all ages. Their caring, professional team of dentists and their staff offer a full range of dental services, including restorative, preventative, pediatric, cosmetic, and so much more. Visit georgedentalassociates.com today. That's georgedentalassociates.com. And find out how they can enhance your smile through the art of dentistry. Wishing the Mustangs a successful season. Mustangs get the big three out of the game as Coach Hogger took a timeout. Nico John sends it out to Blaze Krisner. Touch there from Kavanaugh. Back down to Blaze. They're going to get him for a travel underneath. Going to run the clock here the rest of the way. It's 78 to 48. 352 left in the fourth quarter. Again, we send our best out to Giovanni Santella, who got injured on the West Mifflin side yeah, back in the third quarter after scoring 12 points. Hope he's okay. Never like to see that, especially late in the season. Stevenson, floater, might have been deflected. Titans stay with it. Tough shot. They couldn't get it to go. And John's battling for the loose ball rebound. A foul's going to get called here, I think, on Nico. Yeah, he lets, he lets Stevenson just take it away from him, and then he, a little frustration there, tried to grab it. He bear hugged him from the back and got the foul. A chatter on the live stream, Steve. They want to know how close it is to Buttercup coming in. They love to talk about that. First of two from Stevenson. Good. Uh, problem with that one is you're not going to, the other kids aren't going to get to play much. Yes. You know, uh, I don't see Buttercup. Is Buttercup on the back? Yeah, he's on the back. He's there. Stevenson for a second of two. Lead down, down to 29. This one's up on the way and good. For Nolan Stevenson, he's 4-4 four, four from the foul line. I wonder if anyone's keeping track of how many running clocks we've had this year. We're trying to figure that out. A lot of them, they've gotten to 30, and then they might the final result might end up under 30. To go back and watch some of the replays. And there's a steal for the Titans. Coming back, Stevenson scores in transition. He has 8, 78-52 as we go under three minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Prisoner back to Pratt. Near side, Schwartzfeger. And now Krisner. So all five starters now out of the game for Laurel Highlands. Krisner off to Schwartzfeger. Three just rattling out. Good look. Titans also some subs into the game. Carson Novacell had that last rebound. Stevenson comes back, floats it out to Shy Newby. In the corner, Stevenson again got swatted by Jaden Pratt. Novacell keeping it alive on the near side. It deflects off to Brandon Battles. Send it around the arc. Newby reloads from the outside. Missed there on the three. Got tapped back out in traffic. Somehow Harrison found it, laid it up and in. Todd Harrison has eight here in the fourth, 17 for the game. 78-54, 24-point lead, 208 to play. A quick three for the Mustangs, reining it in. Michael Bittner. So Bittner connecting from the outside. Lead at 27, coming back. Foul called on the drive. The two free throws here for Todd Harrison. 81-54 Mustangs are back in 30 here on the CR Prada Group High School Sports Night. Just as your local State Farm agent combines good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates, you can combine your home and auto. And guess what you'll get? That's right, good neighbor service with surprisingly great rates. In fact, State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman is your go-to agent in Uniontown for the service you deserve at the price you want. So try to combine home and auto today. State Farm agent Lauren Yeoman will help you mix and match things perfectly. Call 724-592-6308 for your surprisingly great rates. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Todd Harrison at one of two free throws for West Mifflin. Mustangs with the basketball back, leading 81 to 55. As Blaze Krisner brings it back across, and they're getting Buttercup warmed up. Mustangs send it down low. Schwartzfeger, a quick two. Nathan Schwartzfeger, his first two of the game, 83-55, 28-point lead for the Mustangs. Shy Newby, will hop step, floater on the way, no good. He's fouling. Sumter, he's going to foul out. So Sumter's going to foul you, out. You, and Newby will head the, back to the line. You put the juice on us on the yes. foul outs. 83-55, <laughs> Sumter's, no, Steve, Tony's saying four. No, went on Kavanaugh. Went on Kavanaugh, Steve, not wow. Sumter. Looked like Sumter was in the area, didn't it? It did. 
First of two free throws good from Newby. Newby three points. Lisa Vanek checking in on our live stream. Hello, Lisa. Even Billy Dice is saying get Buttercup in. Newby makes both free throws. 83-57, 26 point lead for the Mustangs, 118 left in regulation. Krisner will bring it across. Sumter set the screen, Krisner driving, put it off the glass, we get the shots to drop, pretty good look, Brandon battles the rebound there for West Mifflin, battles, leans coming back, another miss, ball loose, and Bittner finds it, ahead to Krisner, wide open, he'll throw it off the glass, <laughs> I don't know if they're trying to set up Kavanaugh for the slam, they're watching too much of the A-team. <laughs> And the Titans get a quick two coming back. I think it was Battles yep. in traffic. 83-59, 24-point lead, 45 seconds left. Coach Hager needs a timeout here to get Buttercup in. Schwartzfeger on the far wing. Back up top, Bittner. And now Krisner a touch in front of the Mustang I don't think he's bench. dressed tonight. He's, he's behind the bench. He's not dressed. It's Kavanaugh. A miss. He's got sweatpants on Rebound Kelly Young for West Mifflin. 83-59. And an air ball there from Young. Ball goes out of bounds back over to Laurel Highlands. See if they get one last shot away. I doubt they'll take one. But the final 10 seconds tick off the clock. Mustangs an 83-59 win. Back to tell you all about it on our postgame show. Brought to you by First Federal Savings and Loan Association of Greene County. Comes your way next year on WMBS, the Triple Live High School Sports Network. Fayette TV and Facebook Live. When your car is damaged, the name to remember is Ted Silva and Son Body and Fender Repair, currently in their 59th year of providing quality, reliable,